Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Company presents Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight, brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, at the same time, by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. But first, we're going to get an important message tonight from the young fellow you know as Chuck Ramsey. It's about the new 1940 flight patrol that he and Patsy Donovan have organized for Captain Midnight. So listen. All right. Are you ready, Chuck? Come on through. Come on, fellas and girls. The radio in your cell phone play may not be so good. I'll play it anyway. Now listen awfully close. Things are getting mighty exciting here. And I know we're going to need your help before long. So if you haven't already joined our new 1940 flight patrol, be sure to do it right away, won't you? Patsy and I both sure appreciate it. And listen, when you get that spinning propeller metal, try to figure out what that secret password means. I can't tell you why now, but that secret password's gonna be mighty important. Well, that'll have to be all for now. Goodbye. Hey, did you hear what Chuck Ramsey said about that spinning propeller metal? Well, he's talking about that marvelous bronze medal of membership, of course, that you get free when you join the new 1940 flight patrol. And boy, it's a beauty. It has a three-blade spinning propeller that you can spin to settle hundreds of different questions and play all sorts of games, too. And say, will you have fun trying to figure out the mystery of what that secret password means? Now, the first five letters of the password are C-O-B-R-A. I'll repeat them. C-O-B-R-A. Cobra. Hey, do you suppose that's a clue? But now, you want to get that secret medal of membership as soon as you can. Remember, this is all you do. The next time you're out in your family car, just ask mother or dad to stop at your Skelly service station. Tell your Skelly man you want to join the 1940 flight patrol. He'll give you your junior pilot's application card right away, and he'll send right in for your spinning propeller medal of membership. The beautiful bronze medal that makes you a full-fledged member of the 1940 flight patrol. And remember this. It doesn't cost you a single penny. No box tops, no package seals, or anything like that. Just tell your skelly man you want to join the new 1940 flight patrol, and he'll do the rest. And now to Captain Midnight. You'll remember that Ivan Shark was watching Captain Midnight and Chuck through his powerful binoculars as they took off in the black two-seater with the rescued fugitive Juan Pareda. Ivan Shark ordered his chief pilot, Von Griff, to take off and follow Captain Midnight. It is now shortly before dark, and Shark is standing on the edge of his secret flying field near the burned remains of the cabin where Major Barry Steele and his agent Bud Conley were trapped. Attending him are his daughter, Fury, and his servant, Fang. Fury is speaking. Yes? So that explains the mystery of the disappearance of those men, Father. Yes, Master. Von Griff did not tell until... I see the whole thing very clearly now, Fury. I am not surprised that Von Griff was puzzled. I have been in this cabin many times, but I did not know there was a secret passageway beneath. That I did not know either. It is amazing that Major Steele knew about it. It was an old mine shaft. Evidently, someone believed there was gold here. Maybe there still is. They must have found out differently, my dear. Otherwise, they would have continued. If it had not been for that shaft, we would have been rid of this Barry Steele once and for all. Maybe we shall be rid of him. Pardon, Master. Do you hear something? Thanks, right, Father. I hear a plane. Ah. There, to the south. It's coming very fast. It must be Von Griff. It could be Captain Midnight. And we are standing out here in the open? Come, Father, let us move on to the trees. Excellent suggestion, Doctor. We must not make a target of ourselves for Captain Midnight. Come, Fang. Yes, Master. If it is Von Griff, he will come in and land at once. Look, the plane is sliding down. Yes. Now, this is far enough. We're safe here. See, Master, the pilot comes in to land. It must be Von Griff. It is Von Griff. See? The plane is not a two-seater, but a single-seater. Do not run out yet, Yuri. 
You never can be sure when Captain Midnight is here. Let's see. I guess I'm playing. I'm gone. Look at him fight, your father. He's taking too much of a chance. Ah, fatal stick, my dear. The pilot is making a perfect size slip landing into a small field. Now, wait a touch down. Ah. <laughs> An excellent landing, indeed. It is possible. I recognize the helmet. Ah. Ah, yes, yes, I see. He's taxiing directly to this spot. I don't have my wings. Very good, Fang. Shall we go out to meet him, Father? Ah, what stupidity, my dear. You should never go out to meet your inferiors. Let them come to you. I am not you, for you see. Turn your ship around, Von Bier, for a quick takeoff. Then come here. Okay, Look at Von Gert's face, Father. He is disturbed about something. Ah, so I see. Well, Von Gert, have you carried out my orders? I... I had some bad luck, Chief. Ah. And what is this bad luck, Von Gert? Captain Midnight got away from That me. is not bad luck. That is rank stupidity. I warn you, Von Gert, a little more of this and you will never... I could not help it, Chief. Captain Midnight flew into a deep aronga, which had many chances. You still uh, alibis. That is all you give me. If you will tell the truth, you will confess to Captain Midnight we're just too smart oh, for you. Get out! I will not listen. Did you follow my other command to fly across the ridge? Ah, yes, Chief. And from there I bring good news. Yeah. Well, what is it? Six Rossman and his men had the cabin surrounded. Ah, well, that is better. What are your orders, then? Everyone in that cabin must be captured alive. In the first place... I do not wish to be put in the position of fighting a mother and her daughter. In the second place, and more important, it is only in that way that I can lay a trap for Captain Midnight. If you capture that Donovan woman and her daughter, Captain Midnight will never leave until he has rescued them. Or is dead. I see you know Captain Midnight very well, my dear Fury. Now, Von Grip, listen closely. You will get four 25-pound bombs from headquarters. One of them a dud with the firing pin removed and filled with sand. Drop this dud as close to the cabin as possible first. This should serve as a warning to those in the cabin. Perhaps they will rush out and into the hands of Rossman. Then, drop the other bombs one by one and destroy the cabin. In that way, we will achieve our purpose and give Captain Midnight something more to think about. <laughs> and I will be watching you from the top of the ridge, Von Whip. Mind you... No more mistakes. Now go. While Ivan Shark's orders are being given, Captain Midnight and Chuck leave the rescued fugitive, Juan Pareda, asleep and follow a narrow mountain trail down to the cabin where they left Ma and Patsy Donovan guarded by Pinky and Slim. Chuck and Captain Midnight finally make off the shack through the gloom. As they're about to rush forward, they suddenly notice that the door is wide open. They halt in amazed silence as Captain Midnight whispers warningly, No, Chuck, no. Don't go in. We can't afford to make a single wrong move. There. There it is again. Quick, Chuck. Back around the corner here. I wonder what... Oh, it's just an owl, Chuck. There's nothing to worry about there. Yes, but what's happened to Ma and Patsy? Come on, gee, this is terrible. I don't know, Chuck, but we're going to find out. That owl red, there's something strange about it. I just don't know what it is. Well, what are you talking about? That owl red. I can't get the idea out of my head that I've heard it before. You've probably heard lots of owls before, Chuck. Come on now. We've got to work and we've got to work fast. Okay, Red. You lead the way and I'll follow. But I still Now listen carefully, Chuck. We're in a tough spot. We can't make one false move. If our friends aren't in that cabin, and I don't think they are... They must have been driven out. Or captured. Should one of us go through the door? Oh, no, Chuck, no, that would be suicide. If Ma and Patsy, Pinky and Slim, have been captured, it's a dead certainty some of Shark's men are hiding inside in the darkness, waiting for us to come in. So now flatten yourself against this wall, and let's move forward. Okay, go ahead. Keep as close to me as you can. Whatever you do, watch the woods around us. I'm right with you. All right, I'm starting. Keep as quiet as you can now. Something's happened to that end of the shack. Come on. I'm going to creep forward a bit. Okay, lead on. Look, Chuck. Look at this. This end of the cabin, what? It's all torn apart. This whole land is shattered. But you can look right inside. Oh, what could have happened? Just a second. I want to examine this ground. Can you find out anything? Grab hold of yourself, Chuck. 
I've got bad news. Go ahead, Red. This whole end of the shack has been blown up. I can tell by the lips of the ground. Gosh, Red, that means... Now, wait a minute, Chuck. Don't jump at conclusions. Follow me. We're going inside. I'm right behind you. All right. This is far enough. I'm afraid we're going to find something we don't want to find. Here. Kneel beside me against the ball here. Okay. I'm going to take a chance and light a match. As soon as I get it lit, you take a quick look around. All right. Go ahead. You see anything? Quick, Red. Blow it out. Any bad news? No, Red. I was just afraid that somebody would see the light. Nothing in here? Not a thing. Well, at least no one was killed in that explosion. Something worse could have happened to them. Meaning they're in shark's hands, eh? Yeah. I told you before, Chuck. Don't take anything for granted. What do you think could have happened here? I don't know. From the looks of things, an aerial bomb must have exploded at this end of the shack. It just doesn't seem possible. Well, that a bomb could be exploded right here without hurting someone. Come on, Chuck. We can't find out anything more here. I don't know whether we can find anything out anywhere. I guess we just never should have left Ma and Pat. That's water under the bridge now, Chuck. We did the best we could under the circumstances. Come on, let's go outside again. Well, what next? Now, look. You see that tree just ahead of us there? Yeah, I see it. Well, it has low branches. We'll be fairly safe from observation. Okay, go ahead. I'll be right behind. All right. Uh, now then, here we are. Now, from an examination of that shack, I don't believe anyone was killed. Therefore, I believe they left the cabin of their own accord. Well, that seems logical. The next question is, were they captured after they got out? That's the whole thing in a nutshell. If they were captured, the chances are they aren't around here anywhere. If they weren't captured, they may be somewhere fairly close. How are we going to find out? Yeah, it's going to be difficult to find out anything while it remains so dark. But gosh, Red, it's only the middle of the night now. We can't wait until daybreak. We may have to, Chuck. However, in the meantime, there's one thing we can do. What's that? We can circle slowly and quietly around the cabin, hoping to pick up their trail. But listen, we'll have to be very careful. All right, let's get... What are you looking at? That way, Red. Up the side of the hill. Now, what was it? I thought I saw something moving. Let's keep quiet then and watch. There, Chuck. There. See? It is something. Oh, now I've lost it. So have I. Gosh, Red, what do we do? Quick, Chuck. Down on your hands and knees and follow me. Again, the sinister Ivan Shark has contrived a diabolical scheme to strike at Captain Midnight. And while this tense struggle between Captain Midnight and Ivan Shark continues, what about Major Barry Steele and Bud Conley in the Spartan? Have they reached the border safely? Don't miss the next adventure when screaming terror from the skies plunges down at the lonely cabin across the ridge. Tune in tomorrow to Captain Midnight. And now, a word to every red-blooded young fellow and girl who loves adventure. Do you have your official junior pilot's application card for Captain Midnight's exciting new 1940 flight patrol? Have you told your skelly man to send in for your beautiful bronze spinning propeller medal of membership and put your name on the list to receive all the amazing free gifts and prizes that are coming for every member? Well, if not, maybe you can stop by your skelly service station with mother or dad tonight. Tell your skelly man you want to join the new 1940 flight patrol and get your very own official medal of membership with the three-blade spinning propeller. He'll be happy to help you join, and it won't cost you a single penny. So why not have the family car stop at your skelly service station so you can join up tonight? Now, don't forget to tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station, for further transcribed adventures of Captain Midnight, brought to you by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. What has Captain Midnight seen, dimly visible in the gloom of the night? And what has happened to Ma and Patsy and Pinky and Slim? Be sure to listen tomorrow. Until then, this is Don Gordon, your Skelly Man, saying goodbye and happy life!